Hello everyone, my name is Jin Yan uh, from Jinan University. The title of my talk today is Quantum Computationally Predict Binding Commitments with Application in Quantum Zero Knowledge Arguments for MP. Uh, let me first state our main results. Uh, we know that uh, quantum secure one-way function implies quantum bit commitment uh, with computational binding. Uh, it is well known that uh, with quantum binding, the committed value uh, is no longer unique. It could be a uh, superposition. So it, had, it is natural to ask what happens if we, we compose quantum bit commitments in parallel uh, to get a string commitment. Then uh, what binding property can it satisfy? Uh, this open question turns out to be uh, notoriously hard. And so in this work, we prove the following computational predict binding property. Uh, we show that any polynomial time bounded standard cannot open commitment in two ways so as to satisfy two inconsistent predicts respectively. Uh, this is the first non trivial quantum computational stream binding that is both useful and can be instantiated uh, with the minimal complexi complexity assumption. Uh, and if we plug a uh, quantum bit commitment in Bloom's protocol, uh, we will get the first quantum zero knowledge arguments for MP solely based on quantum secure when we function. And the main technical part of this work that's in establishing this uh, computational predict binding property. So we make an initial step towards uh, answering this open question. Now let me uh, made it, uh, make it in more detail. Uh, this is the tentative synopsis of my talk. I will first give an overview of our work. Then I will introduce two main results, two main concepts we introduce in this work, namely pattern predict and predict binding. Uh, next, I will talk about some related and concurrent work, uh, which is followed by the deep technical detail. And last uh, is takeaway. So let's begin. An overview of this work. Uh, first, uh, recall bit commitment. A bit commitment scheme is a two-stage interactive protocol between a sender and a receiver, satisfying hiding and binding property. And the hiding property states that the receiver cannot guess the committed bit during a commit stage, while the binding property says the sender cannot change the committed bit later in a reveal stage. So bit commitment can be viewed as an electronic realization of a locked box. Uh, with quantum bit commitment started in this work, we, referred, uh, we allow both quantum computation and quantum communication. Uh, this is in contrast to the classical bit commitment secure against quantum attacks or post quantum bit commitment. By quantum theory, uh, both uh, the statistically hiding and the statistically binding quantum bit commitment is impossible either. Now let me introduce a generic quantum bit commitment scheme. Uh, we call it generic because any quantum bit commitment can be converted into this form. Uh, it can be rep represented by an ensemble of unitary quantum circuit pair Q0, Q1. Uh, to commit a bit B, the sender will uh, first uh, perform QB, uh, unitary circuit QB, on quantum registers C and R, which uh, consist of a bunch of uh, qubits initialized in state 0. After performing QB, C and R will be entangled uh, somehow. In a commit stage, the sender will send uh, the commitment register C to the receiver. Uh, we say the scheme is hiding if the state of C looks the same uh, whether a bit 0 is committed or a bit 1 is committed. Uh, later in the reveal stage, the sender will send the decommitment register R together with the bit B to the receiver, uh, who will apply the inverse of QB on C and R. 
to check uh, if they return to all zero states. We say the scheme is binding or only is binding equivalently if any polynomial time bounded sender cannot open an honest commitment to B as 1 minus B. This quantum bit commitment scheme of the generic form has several nice properties. Uh, first, uh, it is non interactive. In the sense that uh, in both the commit and the real state, uh, a single quantum message is sent. Uh, uh, second, it can be based on quantum scale when we functions. Third, uh, its semi only security implies the full security. Uh, so, so that's why only binding and binding are equivalent. Fourth, it is information theoretic strict binding, in the sense that the opening through the entanglement is unique. Uh, this property will play an important role in our constructions, uh, uh, as shall, shall be seen later. And there may be more nice properties are waiting for us to discover. Uh, it is well known that the general binding of QBC is weak. Uh, this is because a cheating sender may mount the following uh, superposition, superposition attack. It can commit to a superposition of 0 and 1 in an arbitrary way. This of 0 and of 1 can be tuned arbitrarily. Uh, in this regard, the committed value is no longer uh, classically unique, uh, possibly a superposition. And un understanding the binding when the QBC is composed in parallel to commit a string is notoriously hard. Maybe the most famous application of bit commitments are zero knowledge. Here, uh, let's see uh, Bloom's zero knowledge protocol. The prover uh, wants to convince the verifier that the common input graph contains a Hamiltonian cycle. Uh, to this end, the prover will first send commitments of pi g to the verifier, uh, where pi is a randomly chosen uh, computation. The verifier will then respond with a challenge uh, either 0 or 1. And last, when the bit p is 0, challenge is 0, the prover will send the permutation pi plus keys to open all commitments so that the verifier will check the open graph is indeed pi g. In the other case, when a bit b is 1, the prover will try to open a Hamiltonian cycle, and the verifier will check that indeed a Hamiltonian cycle uh, is opened. So the main question that motivates this work is as follows. Uh, we ask ourselves the following question. What happens if we plug a generic, statistically hiding, computationally binding QBC scheme in Bloom's protocol? Uh, this is non-trivial to answer by noting that the quantum rewinding is generally impossible and the quantum binding is generally weak. But uh, uh, this qu question is important because, because if it is possible, then we have several benefits. First, it can reduce the number of rounds from polynomial to just three, solely based on quantum secure one-way function, thanks uh, to the non-interactivity of the QBC. Uh, second, uh, this can circumvent barriers only known for classical constructions thanks to the information theoretic strict binding of the QBC. After some exploration, uh, we have both good news and bad news. Uh, good news is, Watch's quantum rewinding technique works as well towards establishing the statistical zero knowledge property uh, in our setting. And the bad news is, the weak binding of QBC may deteriorate the computational soundness. Uh, this is because uh, it could be a superposition of exponentially many graphs committed by the receiver. Uh, to answer these questions, uh, we obtain our results uh, as follows. Let me restate it. Uh, we compose a generic computationally binding 
quantum bit commitment scheme in parallel, which gives rise to a quantum string commitment scheme, such that it satisfies a non-trivial computational binding, we call predict binding property. And uh, it can be used to establish the security of Bloom's protocol. Okay. Uh, in the second part of this talk, let me introduce uh, two important concepts uh, we introduce uh, in this work, uh, namely uh, pattern predict and predict binding. Uh, they are motivated by the soundness analysis of Bloom's protocol. Uh, the motivation of pattern predict are if uh, in Bloom's protocol, uh, the verifies final verification uh, induces two predicts corresponding to two different challenges. Uh, this inspires us to define pattern predict as follows. Informally, uh, for string str to satisfy a pattern predict, it should exhibit a certain pattern uh, somewhere. Formally, uh, it is given by a triplet of polynomial time algorithms VL, T, and S, such that uh, given a witness W, uh, the algorithm will check its validity. Uh, TW will output a subset, uh, which indicates which portion of the string is to, to examine. And the SW is just, just a pattern to check. So for a string to satisfy a pattern predict P, if there exists a witness W, such that a W is valid, and the projection of STR on TW is just the pattern SW. Uh, we highlight that here, the witness W may not be computable in polynomial time, given a string STR. And uh, we remark that uh, our pattern predict contains the polynomial time decidable predict as a special case. And now let's see how uh, this pattern predict connects to the predicts uh, induced by Bloom's protocol. Corresponding uh, to zero, a uh, challenge zero, uh, we, we define predict P0 as follows. Uh, it witness is just the permutation. And the t on input uh, pi, we are uh, simply output the whole set because uh, all bit commitments are to open. And s on input pi will output pi g, uh, the permutated graph, to check. Corresponding to the challenge 1, uh, the predict p1 is as follows. As witness, it's just an Hamiltonian cycle. And t on input h will output coordinates corresponding to h of h. And sh will output all ones, because uh, edges uh, correspond to 1 in the adjacent matrix of, of the input graph. So uh, the motivation of practical binding with quantum formalization is as follows. Uh, in Bloom's protocol, uh, uh, the two predicts of the verifier induces two projectors or subspaces as follows. Corresponding to the challenge zero, the verifier's um, operation is a binary projective measurement uh, represented by the projector P0 uh, of this form. Uh, basically, uh, it requires that whenever the, imp the permutation is pi, then all bit commitments should be open as pi g. Uh, recall that the quantum circuit to commit a string s is given by uh, the tensor product of QSI. Uh, this is because we commit a string in a bitwise fashion. Uh, corresponding to the challenge 1, the measurement uh, is represented by the project p1 of this form. Uh, basically, it requires that whenever the, lo uh, the Hamiltonian cycle locates at h, then all bit commitments determined by h uh, should be opened as all ones. Here, uh, the registers for the commitment check are not fixed, they are determined by h. 
have for soundness, we need to show that subspaces P0 is almost uh, orthogonal to P1, up to any efficiently realizable U, as it does uh, that performing on the space subspace induced by registers other than the commitment registers, namely uh, the U does not touch the commitment register C. So this in inspires us to define predict binding as follows: that P0, P1 to be uh, two inconsistent predicts, uh, namely uh, any string can satisfy at most one of them. Uh, pictorially, P0 and P1 uh, do not intercept. For example, uh, in Bloom's protocol, predicts P0, P1 are inconsistent when the input graph G is not Hamiltonian. Uh, informally, predict binding with respect to P0, P1 if uh, the, the sender can open commitments so that the revealed value, uh, possibly a superposition, satisfy P0 with probability 1. Then uh, the sender cannot open the same commitments so that the revealed value satisfy P1 with non-negligible probability. Uh, this is the formula uh, given by this quantity uh, be non negligible. Be negligible. Uh, this C is an arbitrary state then, uh, on which we first apply P0, uh, followed by any efficiently realizable U that does not touch commitments, which is followed by P1, and the resulting vector should be negligible. Uh, we say predict binding. If a uh, predict binding with respect to any pair of inconsistent predicts, our main result is uh, the parallel composition of a generic computationally binding quantum bit commitment scheme uh, gives rise to a quantum computationally predict binding string commitment scheme. Uh, there are two caveats uh, for our results. At first, uh, the QBC scheme is of the generic form, which is easy to handle uh, technically. Second, we actually uh, did not prove the full predict binding, uh, namely uh, with respect to an arbitrary inconsistent consistent predict pair. Rather, we require that for at least one predict, a fixed portion of the strings is needed to check in order to decide whether strings satisfy this predict. Anyway, okay, our predict binding uh, is more than enough for our application, and we expect uh, it, ca it can be further extended to the full predict binding uh, in the future. Uh, now, uh, let me uh, mention some related and concurrent work. Uh, previously, uh, we know nothing about the binding, the parallelization of a general QBC that is computationally binding. Uh, Uru uh, studied class, collapse binding QBC, uh, but a general QBC cannot be collapse binding. Uh, previously, some quantum string commitments with a specific computational binding properties uh, that are useful were pro proposed including F binding and Q binding. But uh, however, neither of them can be instantiated with well-founded assumptions. There are also two concurrent works which also realize quantum bit commitment with simpler exchanged quantum states and with more desirable properties than ours, including uh, extractability and equivocality. Uh, however, and, uh, and they are solely based on quantum secure one-way functions. And these properties uh, may result in wider applications uh, in theory. However, uh, they achieve uh, better properties at the cost of extremely high load complexity, as high as polynomial number of rounds. And their constructions are more complex than our uh, quantum bit commitment scheme of the generic form. Now let me uh, talk about some technical detail towards establishing 
uh, predict binding. Uh, in one sentence, uh, we find a more clever way to sum possibly exponentially many terms within a superposition to overcome the general exponential curse. So, I will give a pictorial illustration. Uh, it turns out that our goal is to bound a superposition of at least four. Uh, this is a projection on P1 of a superposition uh, that satisfies P0. We view it as a root of a binary tree. For each term in a superposition, uh, it can be viewed as a leaf of this binary tree. And by a quantum bit on its binding, each leaf can be bound by the binding error epsilon. Uh, if we try to bound our goal uh, through all these leaves by simply uh, calling, calling a triangle in inequality of the vector norm, then uh, since they are exponentially many leaves, uh, this may incur an exponential uh, multiplicative factor, uh, which is intolerable uh, in security analysis. So, for our purpose, uh, we, we need to take another approach. Uh, specifically, we shall bound each internal node where its two children. Uh, uh, for this root, its left child corresponds to the uh, superposition that satisfies P0 uh, and with prefix 0. For its right child, uh, it, it, it strings with prefix 1. It turns out that we can bound a root by the summation of its two children, uh, plus an additive error epsilon. Uh, using a triangle inequality uh, and quantum bit on its binding. In turn, uh, uh, each of its two child can finally be bounded by their children, respectively. This, for example, this left child can be bounded by its uh, left child uh, with prefix uh, zero zero, and uh, its right child with prefix zero one, and its right child bounded by its left child with prefix one zero, and its right child with prefix one one, plus another uh, additive error epsilon. We can bound uh, through these trees uh, from the root to the leaves uh, in this way. And uh, it turns out that uh, the error uh, can only close linearly in the depth of this tree. So, uh, in this way, uh, we uh, can bound this uh, by a negligible probability of quantity. Uh, the takeaway. I would like to mention two points. The first, our work showed that a generic uh, computationally binding quantum bit commitment scheme whose binding is rather weak but which has several nice properties that classical computationally binding bit commitments do not have uh, could be useful in quantum cryptography. Uh, second, uh, it is non-trivial to establish the binding property of the parallel composition of a computationally binding quantum bit commitment scheme. Okay, uh, this is the end of my talk. Thanks for your listening.